Thanks to Gloria and Wendy and all of the conference organizers for having me here today. It's great to meet with everyone virtually and keep important policy discussions like these going despite the crazy year we all find ourselves in. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris Lopez and I am the Western Region Business Development Manager at Gotenna. Gotenna is a mesh networking platform. Our radio devices pair with leading mobile applications in order to extend the use of critical texting and mapping functionality, even when you don't have access to cellular, Wi-Fi, or satellite service. We are very fortunate to work with several fire agencies in Colorado who are pioneering the use of our tactical grade GoTenna Pro devices and truly setting the standard for off-grid communications and public safety as a whole. I was invited to speak today about how we see the wildland fire communications landscape changing and how this impacts our overall risk reduction strategies as we prepare for increasingly severe fire conditions moving forward. No matter the size and scale of an incident, I can't think of a single action after action report where communications was not included as a concern or area of improvement. And on the slide here, you'll see just a sampling of headlines reported in 2020. Why do we keep running into same communication issues over and over? In a world where we as consumers can get practically anything anywhere with a click of a button, firefighters are still primarily relying on legacy incident management tools like these that make it difficult. In keeping with the theme of this year's conference, we know there's an incredible amount of risk associated with the failure or even just momentary disruption in communications. Taking a look back at NIFC data, the past three decades show that entrapment or burnover are still a leading cause of death on the fire line. The first spike in this chart is in 1994, the South Canyon Fire in Colorado, where 14 firefighters lost their lives in the midst of a growing spot fire. The second spike is even more recent in 2013, where strong winds overran 19 firefighters in Yarnell Hill, Arizona, because command was unable to locate them. The situations are tragic, and we can reduce these safety risks with better communications. So if we were to create the perfect solution to address the challenge of communications and situational awareness in wildland firefighting, what would that look like? A lot of experts in the industry refer to the solution as the holy grail, and I particularly want to credit Bill Gabbert, the editor of Wildfire Today, because I first heard this term in an article of his. The perfect solution allows crews to track the locations of every individual firefighter, engine and aircraft, as well as the location of the fire on a single screen. In a lot of the scenarios we discussed on the previous slide, firefighters weren't sure exactly where the fire was and incident commanders didn't always know where crews were so they could direct them to safety. But fortunately, we're already seeing the holy grail in action in Colorado. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, GoTenna is proud to work with the Colorado Department of Fire Prevention and Control, and specifically their TAC program within the Center of Excellence. We've included some of our joint AARs in the download section of this session if you'd like to read about the program in more detail. But for now, I wanted to play a brief news clip that summarizes their efforts in bringing together smartphones, the ATAC application, and paired GoTenna Pro Mesh network radio devices for wildland fire response. When it comes to fighting fires, there's lots of logistics involved, but some new smartphone technology could make that all easier. That's why Senator Cory Gardner was in the Valley today to watch a simulated situation right here at Watson Island. Brush 5 and Engine 1, I would like for you guys to cross the footbridge and begin constructing fire line. This is how managing an active wildland fire is currently done. With radios and a physical map. We usually have to use topographic maps of the area to get an idea of where the fire is burning. It's a system that most incident commanders have used for years. In terms of knowing exactly where the GPS location of our firefighters are, um, that's currently a very rare thing to be able to do. But it's possible to make it better. Firefighting groups showed Senator Gardner a new system to track firefighters in the field. It's an app called the Team Aware kit. Every person that carries the app will be able to see a dot for where all the other firefighters are at. Through the app, they can also mark if a fire has grown in a specific area. 
and put eyes in the sky. We can even access drone feeds to show live video over the incident. But what if the fire is in an area with bad phone service? The system can still work through mesh radios firefighters carry. That mesh radio will create its own data network to send messages directly between firefighters. Senator Gardner has worked on legislation to get FEMA to integrate this type of tech nationwide and sees greater capabilities. Search and rescue efforts if you've got some other kind of a, a, a demand in a, in a city environment with police response. Tech that could save lives and time. It's remarkable in its effectiveness. It's going to save lives. It's going to make better decisions possible on how to fight that fire. In addition to improving safety for individual firefighters, enhancing communication systems with mesh with mesh enabled smartphones and mobile apps also means greater accountability. Tools like GoTenna Pro and ATAC allow crews to work more efficiently and they even provide a digital footprint for AARs and assessing what can be improved during the next event. So what's next? There's certainly more work to do in order to make this holy grail a reality for large scale fire deployment. In order to fully reimagine the firefighting communications toolkit, we need to ensure durability for smartphones, tablets, and other mobile devices in a rugged environment, the integration with complementary software solutions and applications, interoperability between various radio channels, and redundancy for our communications infrastructure on and off the grid. I'll plan to walk through each of these in more detail and share some of the insights and feedback we've been hearing from our customers in the field. It's not a given that every individual firefighter has a smartphone on them in the field. Even with the benefits of using these mini computers to track individuals' locations, share map and incident updates, and text in the event of voice radio fails, there's still a bit of pushback. One of the main concerns is that devices aren't durable enough to survive the heat and other conditions in the field. The team at Gotenna recently partnered with Jargonaut to design a custom accessory kit for smartphones, impaired radio devices pictured here. We field tested with off-grid operators across the military and public safety in order to understand the requirements for operating in the most rugged environment. Advancements like these will help agencies set the standards for mobile equipment in the field and make it easier for agencies to have confidence and security in adopting mobile technology at a larger scale. As demonstrated by the success in Colorado, ATAC is certainly a great situational awareness solution for fire crews. But what happens when a partner agency like law enforcement, EMT, regional dispatch, or even National Guard or disaster volunteer group arrives at the scene? A large scale deployment of ATAC or any other incident management software will certainly entail understanding the full software ecosystem and incorporating the necessary integrations between various platforms into emergency communications planning. During the brush fires in Australia in late 2019 and early 2020, a Gotenna customer in Australia did not have access to ATAC, but instead decided to pull individual user location data into their existing command and control system using our API. Technically, it's not complicated to get these dots on maps, but it does require advanced planning so command centers can have that single operating picture as quickly as possible. In addition to making sure firefighter locations and other incident data can be pushed and pulled from the field to command, we also need to make sure proper radio frequencies are established for off-grid long-range transmissions. Many agencies already have statewide interoperability channels established for voice radio purposes. These allow various responding groups, such as National Guard and Mutual Aid, to arrive at a scene and begin working with local agencies immediately. But we need to also start thinking about how these same channels can be used to transmit low bandwidth data, like locations, map objects, and text messages. Typically, these radio channels are open, but with encrypted data sent through mobile devices, there are still ways to ensure security. So what could a large scale deployment of mesh enabled smartphones look like in practice? Traditionally, it is difficult to send the latest updates between teams in the field and command, as well as volunteers who might be assisting and interfacing with members of the public at a family assistance center. With GoTenna Pro units paired to the phone of every staff member and volunteer, the latest incident updates from off-grid locations 
can be relayed via encrypted group text messages much more frequently. Sending texts between on and off grid locations might also be preferable to voice radios and satellite phones if sensitive victim information is being shared and members of the community are within listening distance. Mesh networking technology like Gotenna's is often viewed as a redundant backup layer to centralized infrastructure. If we intend to make mesh networking devices a standard piece of operating equipment for large scale deployments, there are ways to immediately enhance the range with the use of strategically placed relay nodes. Multiple agencies from the regional to state and federal level here in the US and also internationally are looking into semi-permanent and fixed relay node options to blanket areas of operation that are prone to cell and voice radio failure. These relay nodes could take several forms, either placed on a cell or radio tower, on a vehicle like a tow trailer, or even drop down from aircraft as needed and allowing teams on the ground to quickly set up temporary 20-foot masks with antennas. These kinds of solutions will ensure our off-grid networks can become an effective backup layer when the other forms of communications fail. And with that, I would be happy to take any questions from the audience. I believe Christopher from our team at GoTenant is also online to gather questions that have been submitted during the presentation as well. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chris, for that. So it looks like we have a question here from a member of the audience. Is it possible to have these devices uh, for volunteers uh, in a community? A good question, Christopher. So yes, it is. Um, our equipment is designed to be used by state and local governments, as well as any agency that might be helping uh, those agencies as well. Uh, search and rescue teams, um, we have had a lot of requests from those throughout the country. Uh, we have worked with quite a few of them and we are currently in the process of getting those types of uh, teams set up right now with our solution. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, looks like there is one other question here. Is it possible to breadcrumb Go Tenna Pro devices? Well, it depends what you what your term of breadcrumbing is, uh, because that that term is used in various different ways. Right now, our device technically do not breadcrumb, but what you can do is you can actually uh, place points of locations on the maps when you're using our application. Breadcrumbing is a an application that we're looking at, and it is on our roadmap for future releases in our software. Great, thanks for that. There is uh, another question here. What is the Max GoTenna Pro network range? Uh, that's a great question as well. Our range varies. Typically, our devices, because they are a two-way radio, are line of sight between devices. So coverage and range can vary depending on where your area of operation is, as well as the frequency band that you're operating in. But I can tell you that through testing um, and a lot of exercises that we've performed over uh, several months that uh, we can get some incredible, pretty incredible uh, coverage just by putting devices in relay modes and putting them at a very high altitude. I currently think that our record right now is close to 62 nautical miles by having one of our devices set up as a relay in a, uh, in a helicopter or aircraft. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for uh, answering that. Uh, looks like there's one more question that came in over here. Does GoTenna Pro support voice? Our, our GoTenna Pro and our Pro X, they're not designed to support voice. Our equipment is not designed to replace a voice radio. The GoTenna solution is designed to complement the existing communications uh, programs or equipment that you're currently using in the field. We are focused on providing small data packages as well as providing personal location identification on our application itself. So that is our focus. And uh, to answer the question, yeah, we do not support voice. Great, thanks. Um, it doesn't look like there are any other uh, questions from members in the audience at this moment. So Chris, um, I'll leave it to you if you had anything in addition you'd like to add. Yeah, there's one question that we, I receive quite often, whether it's in Colorado or in the Western United States, is what frequencies does the equipment operate on? And our equipment operates in the VHF and UHF bands. 
and those are specific to the FCC Part 90 license. So all the frequencies that our equipment operates in are license frequencies, um, and those are, you know, for the protection of our customers. So they're they're operating on a secure frequency. So yeah, thank you so very much, uh, Chris, for the presentation. Uh, Wendy, thank you so much for having us. And Gloria, we appreciate your support with uh, moderating this event. Um, so I'm just going to pass it back to you, Chris, on any uh, closing remarks for this presentation. Again, I'd just like to thank everybody for uh, allowing us to present today and for all of you participating. So thank you very much.